Modeling seems to be a compulsion in our species. There's nothing new about the idea that we model the world. Uh, other species do as well. There are lots of interesting experiments uh, where you can demonstrate in birds and dogs and other mammals um, the ability, the, the only explanation for their behavior as observed and, and provoked and tested is that they form internal maps in the same, in some sense, in the same way we do. Obviously, the sensory apparatus they use, for example, dogs are very good at, at olfactory stuff. I think we are too. I think it's overlaid by so much stuff that we don't know we're doing it anymore, but I, my personal impression is by exploring this, I can identify state by smell, and I think you can too. In fact, I think you do all the time, and it's part of your tacit, implicit skill set as you have relationships that are close enough to know what other people smell like. And I think you fold this unconsciously and it has an influence. I think the perfume manufacturers of the world know a lot about this. Uh, so, um, modeling, as I said, seems to be an obsessive compulsive commitment of the species. So, what the hell's the difference between modeling, NLP modeling, and what a biologist is doing when he, he or she is modeling population dynamics in some species they're studying? Uh, or a physicist is uh, doing a model of certain quantum interactions. Uh, a physician is uh, doing research on uh, the blood mo uh, brain barrier to figure out how to move stuff through this famous barrier so that it can be targeted for particular kinds of uh, diseases that occur in the cortical areas. Everybody's building a model. So what is the essential difference? And I'm going to ask you to pick this out as we go rapidly through this. So in the NLP models, welcome. In the NLP models, this is a model of modeling. <coughs> Number one, get yourself a genius. Number two, unconsciously assimilate Patterning. Three, practice in parallel context. And these, in fact, these two right here are, this is the course. This is the only thing we're really shooting at. To have the ability to enter a know-nothing state, which just allows you to unconsciously assimilate patterning and then practicing it in parallel context through imitation until your behavior is, is indistinguishable as too strong a condition. Your behavior is similar enough to the model's behavior that people have difficulty making the distinction where the differences are, if anywhere, and the responses that your behavior, imitative behavior of the model, elicit from the world are more or less the responses that uh, the model gets when he or she works with a group of people or whatever the application happens to be. At that point, that magical point where you can replicate by imitation or partial imitation the behavior of the model itself, then something important happens in the model. Step four is a conscious, unconscious dance in order to find a way of coding what you already are able to do. And then finally, five is a phase of testing. Human behavior. Especially skill sets like the ones that you'll be exposed to and the uh, opportunity for you to practice these know-nothing states. Is comp they are complex enough, behaviors such as these, that there must be thousands of ways of successfully coding them. There is no approved solution. There's no solution at all. There are a thousand solutions. And the only way you'll know whether you have successfully in stage four explicated the patterns which are the tacit knowledge base of the behavior you've already demonstrated you can do, namely imitation, successful, of the model. Uh, the only way you know if that coding is a successful transfer mechanism to other people who want to be able to do this is by giving it to other people and observing whether given the code only but not the original model in a reasonably short, efficient period of time. They come to behavior which resembles in its most essential elements 
the behavior of the model that you used and transmitted to them through this code. This section down here is complex in the extreme. And it's an interesting interplay between, as I said, a dance between conscious and unconscious behavior. And we're not doing anything with that here. That's not our, our, our intention here. Our intention here, we're providing minor geniuses, that is geniuses in small, narrow band niches, illusion, singing, tie boxing, etc. And we provide that. Your, these are your jobs right here. This is actually a loop here. Unconscious assimilation of what they do, and then practicing it until your behavior is indistinguishable from a third observer position to the model. Some of you will actually succeed in doing this with one or more of the models. And it'll be amazing to you, and it'll be amazing to me. It always is. And, and it's a, a very confirming experience. So let me, let me run through this very quickly. Geniuses, well, if you can't figure out who a genius is, then you probably can't do this kind of work. Uh, obviously, there are two parts to it in my own personal experience, historically. One is, I got to be interested in the field. I'm not a, if I'm not interested in the field, I'm not going to make that kind of commitment. So there has to be a personal element sort of to get me interested in the whole thing to begin with. And then, since, let's say I'm interested in uh, negotiation. So I could go to the professional associations of negotiators here in the UK or in the States or wherever I'm working and ask them to nominate 50 members who I would then survey and ask them, who are your 10 best negotiators in this group? And the same, if the, you know, I look for the same names coming up on the individual lists. And then I'll probably go look at them. Why will I go watch them actually do the negotiation? The relationship between a model and a modeler is so intimate that I wouldn't consider accepting a commission to do a model of someone until I'd been in their presence, personally verified that I recognized genius in what they were doing. So I know I've got a, one that really, really does work. And without going mystical on you here, which would cause a number of people to faint, um, there has to be some sort of movement inside of me at the unconscious level that says, yeah, I, I feel a hunger for it. There's a, a movement. There's a sense of, yeah, I would like to get involved in this. There is a congruency check where the unconscious votes at that point. And if I don't get that movement, I don't do that job. If I get that movement, then, as Sherlock used to say, the game is afoot. And now, now the, the, the dance begins. Uh, so. Genius doesn't have any independent uh, definition. It's not a well-defined term. Um, there are practical ways of arriving at it. And I have mentioned a very personal requirement I have if I'm going to accept the challenge of modeling someone.